If your heating and cooling is working at the same time, that's really annoying, but you're at the right place, that's what this video is going to be all about. There's typically four reasons that can cause this. The first reason is maybe you have a new unit, a new furnace or air conditioner that was installed, or maybe the thermostat was replaced. The first reason is maybe something is not wired correctly, which is causing the furnace and AC to both come on at the same time. The second reason is that perhaps the thermostat itself is bad. The third reason is maybe the control board in the furnace or the air handler is bad. Or the last reason is perhaps there's a wire that is shorting out or two wires that are shorting out or basically there's two wires that are touching that should not be touching and that's what's causing that. And one thing I want to point out is that at my house I have a straight air conditioner, not a heat pump. If you have a heat pump, that brings in a couple more variables. There's a few more things that can go wrong. For example, the sequencer that turns on your heat strips or the elements inside of the air handler, that thing can go bad and cause constant power to go to the heating strips. Or maybe the elements themselves or the heat strips are bad and they're shorting out, which causes them to be on all the time. So just so you know, this is straight AC, not a heat pump, although a lot of things will overlap. So if your furnace and air conditioner are both running at the same time, I would start your investigation at the thermostat. And to do that, you'll need some jumper cables. I have one here that's an alligator. That's just a mini alligator jumper cable and one that is magnetic. I use these all the time, but that's because I work with this kind of stuff. Chances are you might not have these. You can buy them or you can make a little jumper of your own. All you would need is just a little paper clip and just put some electrical tape in the middle of it and bend it and that'll be your jumper. I actually have a video of how to bypass a thermostat where I go into more detail on all of that stuff. So if you want more information on that, just take a look at that video. But you'll just need a little jumper, either bought or homemade, and we can start at the thermostat. The first thing I would do is pull the thermostat off the wall. Many of them will come off without much effort. You just have to pull the bottom off and then it should just come right out like mine did. Some of them will have screws but they're fairly simple to take off. Just take a look around it underneath it and see how it comes apart. So take the face of the thermostat off and here we see our base. This is where all the wires from the furnace or from the air handler come. So they go all the way from the furnace to your thermostat. This is a short piece of wire but kind of resembles what this is. So these wires are pretty much this side and then this wire runs through your walls and into your furnace and goes into a thermostat strip that's at the furnace. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later on as well. So that's what that would look like. This wire just goes right into the wall. So the first thing to pay attention to is with your thermostat off the wall and the power still onto your furnace, does the furnace or the air conditioner keep running or does everything shut off? If everything shuts off, that pretty much rules out the control board. So all that's left is either something wrong with your thermostat or there's a wire that's shorting out somewhere, either inside your wall or at the control board or at the thermostat itself. So one thing to look for while you have the thermostat face off is to make sure that none of these wires, mine are kind of neat. They go into their own respective slots, but sometimes the bare piece of the wires are long and they're mounted to the base with just flathead screws. So those bare spots, I've seen them where they're touching before. And if they're touching, that could cause both your furnace and AC to come on. So make sure that none of the bare spots on the wires are touching each other. And while you're here, you can make sure that none of the connections are loose. Just gently tug on each wire and make sure it doesn't come out super easy. If it does, then you want to tighten it down a little bit. And this is the part where you're going to need the jumpers. So after you have the thermostat off, you will now turn on your heating and your cooling manually without the help of the thermostat. So in my case, I have these little screws in here. If I put my jumper, by the way, you can do this either the way I'm gonna show it right now, or you can take these wires out, loosen up the screws and just pull these wires out. And then you can use a little alligator clip like this to jumper the wires. But I'm gonna be showing you an example with the magnetic jumper, just because that's easier. So the first thing I'm gonna jumper is the R, which is power. Mine is jumpered right here, as you can see, it says RC. There's a little jumper right over there. R should always have a jumper between R and RC. So if you don't have a jumper, that actually can cause your cooling not to come on at all. But anyway, you'll jumper R to Y, and right here everything's labeled on the bottom of mine. 
I will jump from R to Y and that should bring my air conditioner on. If you hear your air conditioner come on, you can go downstairs, go outside, verify it. If only the AC comes on without the furnace, that's a good sign. At that point, I would disconnect the jumper. And then I would also try jumpering R to W, which is gonna be heat. And that should turn on just the furnace. So once again, you would go downstairs, verify that only the furnace is working and not the air conditioner. And one more thing you can check is just the G wire, which is the fan or the blower fan inside of the air handler. So you would jumper R to G, and that should only bring on your blower fan in the furnace. And while you're jumpering all this, just make sure you don't jumper R to C, which is common, because that will be a direct short and you're gonna blow a fuse in your control board. Or if you don't have a fuse, even worse, you could burn out your control board. So don't confuse the green wire or the G with the C, which is common. So the purpose of jumpering out the thermostat like that is to see if your thermostat is the problem or not. So if when you were jumpering each one of those terminals, when you jumpered cooling, heating, and the fan, if each one of them turned on normally, just the one thing, and stayed on, not both of them at the same time, that means that you know for sure that the thermostat is bad. But if when you were jumpering it like that, for example, if you jump the cooling and both the cooling and the heating came on anyway, then it's highly unlikely that the thermostat is the problem. At that point, if everything comes on, even when you're jumpering it manually, I would continue your investigation at the furnace and leave the thermostat alone for now. All right, so we're down at my furnace. I have the furnace power switch off, or you can just shut the breaker off to the furnace. I took the doors off and locate your control board. Usually it'll be wherever the blower motor is, the blower motor housing. In my case, the blower motor housing is right there. There's the blower motor. You can see my filter from here. And almost every control board will have a thermostat strip on the control board. Like this, for example. This isn't exactly a very common setup. But here is my wire that comes from the thermostat right here. So that comes from the thermostat and just goes into my control board. And this thinner wire with just two wires coming out of it, a white and a red. This one's coming out from my air conditioner outside. So when I was saying that two wires might be touching, what I meant is, for example, let's say somebody was messing, messing with these wires, right? They took them off for some reason and they put them back on. See how there's extra room for all that? Not extra room, but you see all that extra slack that the wire has, the bare wire? For example, if this wire, see how close it is? This is my Y terminal right here, and this is my R terminal right here. See how close that Y wire is to the R? That is actually close enough to probably energize it. So if this wire is touching this, R is power, Y is cooling. If this is jumpered like that, that will turn your air conditioner on 24 seven. It'll be constantly powered on. So this is one of the reasons, I mean, I've seen this before where wires were touching like that and that was causing things to run all the time. So make sure that these wires are in their own little places and not touching any of the other terminals like that. And I don't wanna take off any of my wires on the control board because I don't feel like having to put them back on afterwards. So we're gonna go with this example thermostat right here instead. It's basically the same thing as mine, but it's a little bit easier to follow. So after you ruled out the thermostat, the next thing you wanna do is come down to your furnace, turn off the power. You can visually inspect the wires, make sure nothing's bad there. But after you have the power off to the furnace, the next thing you wanna do is take all of the wires off of the control board. And before you do this, you might wanna label all the wires or take a picture so you know where to put them all back after you're done doing this test. So go ahead and take all the wires off, disconnect them and just let, leave them hang. And then I would hold down the door switch. Here's my door switch. Or put a piece of tape on it like I have and flip the power switch or turn your circuit breaker back on and see what happens. And at this point, if the furnace or the air conditioner turns on with all the thermostat wires disconnected, 
that usually means that the control board is defective and that's what's causing both your furnace and AC to run at the same time. Okay, so let's summarize our findings. If when you pull off all the wires from the control board, everything does turn off and nothing comes on when you turn the power back on, that means most likely the board is good, the thermostat's good, and the problem lies in the wire. Somewhere there's a broken wire or there's two wires that are touching each other inside of the wire itself. Maybe some mice chewed on the wire or maybe somebody drove a nail through it and these wires are shorting out to each other inside. And at that point, you would just have to replace the whole wire. So let's just review real quick. When you jumper the thermostat manually, when you take it off the wall and you jumper it manually, that's when you're checking to see if the thermostat is bad. So if you jumper it manually and all the components come on one at a time, furnace comes on by itself, AC comes on by itself, fan comes on by itself, that means that the thermostat is bad. If, when you're jumpering it manually, the AC and the furnace come on together, then you know that the thermostat is not bad. Next, when you go down to the furnace, turn off the power and pull off all the wires from the furnace control board, that is to check if the control board is the problem. If you turn the power back on and everything's idle, nothing is working, that means most likely the control board is not your issue. Most likely it's that wire that's the problem. So hopefully you were able to follow all that and figure out what is causing your furnace and AC to work together. That's actually all I had to share with you today. If you had a problem with your furnace or air conditioner in the past and you were able to fix it, please let us know in the comments below how that went for you, your experience and what you had to do to fix it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, did you know that there's more chickens in the world than there are humans? Pretty crazy, right? But that aside, let me actually tell you something useful. Did you know that mint leaves are actually a natural remedy for tooth pain? So next time a tooth is driving you up the wall, remember my words. All you need is some preferably fresh mint leaves. You can usually get them at any grocery store in a little see-through box. If you can't find them, dried mint leaves should work as well, you know, for teas and stuff like that. So if you get those leaves, fresh preferably, or dry, you just take a couple of those leaves, put them in your mouth, you chew them up just a little bit, you don't want to crush them, and then whichever tooth is hurting, usually it's the back teeth that hurt, right? Either this side or this side, whichever side, chew them up and then put that chewed up pulp or whatever you want to call it on that side of the mouth and just leave it there for like 15 minutes. And I've tried this many times before and it really does heavily alleviate the tooth pain. So next time you have a toothache and you're tired of just scaling the walls, you can remember me then and thank me later.